I'm back at the old desk. Oh, it's a little dusty. Gotta clean that. Hey Cheap Bitches, I'm Rob and this is On The Cheap Tip. Now in the last poll that I took on YouTube, you guys voted for how to lose weight fast based on science. And even though I'm not a nutritionist or a scientist, never did well in science. I'm still gonna try to show you anyway. I'm going to show you simplified ways to lose weight with an easy diet and you don't even have to be a scientist. Who knew you could do that? Also, on this diet, you can have carbs. I know keto people right now are just like falling out of their chairs. So if you like that, which I'm sure that's the reason why you're here, let's get started. Now the first thing that anyone needs to do when they decide that they want to lose weight is find out your calorie deficit. And that's actually really easy because there are tons of calorie counters online, which I will also link one down below. It isn't sponsored, but hey, if you'd like to sponsor me, feel free to hit me up. In this calorie counter, you're going to enter all of your stats, your weight, your height, your age, all of the things that make the number of calories you eat right for you. Now in my personal calorie count, to maintain my weight, I need a little over 2,000 calories. For mild weight loss, 1,800 calories. And for regular, just everyday weight loss, a little over 1,500 calories. Now this calorie counter does give me an option for extreme weight loss, a little over 1,000 calories. But let me tell you, a thousand calories it ain't a lot of food. I don't really recommend that for myself, and if I don't recommend it for myself, I wouldn't recommend it for you. So my main calorie deficit would be a little over 1,500. And of course, your calories are going to be way different than my calories, because we are different heights, different shapes, different sizes. Get it? Got it? Capiche? Good. The next thing is your diet plan. In this particular diet, we are going to measure our food. And I know what you're already thinking, Rob, I don't want to break out my measuring cups and measuring spoons and all this stuff to figure out how much and what is what. Forget about all that. Forget about it. All you're going to use is your hands. When I first heard this, I was like, how scientific could that be? Well, it actually does make sense because our hands are most likely proportionate to our body, which means that that is a good measurement for each individual person. So don't discard this theory yet because it's been actually recommended by a lot of professionals in the business and it's just a really easy way to do it. So let's go to it. Now let's start with protein. For protein, you're going to need two palm sizes of protein a day, which is roughly about three to four ounces depending on the size of your hand. Now this includes meats, nuts, nut butters, and even cheese. I know some of you guys are gonna be telling me, cheese is dairy, Rob. Yes, but in this particular diet and in most diets, cheese is considered protein because of the lack of lactose in the cheese when it's actually solidified. If you don't believe me, look it up. I'm not gonna argue that with you. <laughs> or just argue with me in the comments and I just won't respond. Now to measure veggies, you are going to use two cupped handfuls. That means anything that fits in a cup of your hand. That doesn't look, that looks a little sexual. Let me stop that. This includes all vegetables, especially leafy greens, except for starchy vegetables. Starchy vegetables, which I will explain later, is going to go in the carb category. So that's like potatoes, carrots, anything in that realm is going to go over into another section. Now for fruit, you're going to do two fistfuls. This includes all fruit that is not starchy. Everything but something like a banana. A banana, again, is going to go into that carb category. Now on to the carbs, which I know you're really excited about because in most diets, you cut out the carbs. For carbs, you're allowed to have three fistfuls. This list can include whole grain breads, pastas, rice, and also your potatoes and your banana type fruit and vegetables. But I really wanna specify that you're going to lean more towards the non-processed rather than processed. And even though bread and pastas are processed, they can also be processed in more of a whole way, like whole grains, whole wheat, stuff that has less ingredients in it is less processed than chemically made food that we eat every day because, you know, 
chemicals are delicious. And that actually goes for all of the stuff that we're saying. You really want to stick to more of a whole food based diet. No processed sugars, nothing like that. The next thing that this diet includes is dairy. A lot of people have problems with dairy. I understand if you do, you can just kind of cut this part out. In some cases, dairy does give you good probiotics for your stomach. It does help your digestive system and you're not really having a lot of it. Eight ounces or one cup of dairy per day. That includes your milk, your yogurt, and any cream that you might use maybe to put in your coffee or something like that. And the last part of your diet is your oils and fats because of course we need to be able to cook with them. You do need fats in your diet as well. But in this diet, as opposed to like a keto diet, you're only going to have one thumb full. And that's going to include your cooking oil, your butter, the dressing that you might put on a salad or marinade. Now the one thing about this diet is there is no bad snacking. So forget about those cakes and those cookies and that ice cream. It is null and void in this diet. To drink, you're only allowed to have water, coffee, tea, and the coffee and tea you want to make sure that they are either black or maybe just have a little bit of cream in them. If you really need to have some kind of sweetener, I would use maybe a more natural artificial sweetener, but I don't really even like those myself. So I'd rather just stick to like a cream coffee and hold the sugar. Now I actually want to show you what it looks like for a full day's worth of food. So we're going to head on over to my kitchen and go do that. So let's go. Ugh. I slaved away. All right, welcome to my kitchen. Because I am such a nice guy, I went through the trouble of making a full day's meal. And I'm sweating myself because I made it in like an hour. I cook, I clean. Now this is an example of a full day's meal. If you have any special dietary restrictions, of course you can substitute any of the things you see here, but this is just an example of what I might eat on this diet. So we start off with breakfast. I have an egg on whole wheat toast with some ham and some sliced cheddar cheese. I always like to have a little bit of fruit on the side, so I have some blueberries. Now sometimes between breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner, people like to have a snack and that's when I would go for your dairy. I would recommend yogurt because of the probiotics. You want to have those kind of early on so that it just helps with your digestion and get that good bacteria in there. Then we go on to lunch, which I have a mixed green salad with some cherry tomatoes. I also like to add in a serving of almonds just to get a little bit more of my protein for the day. And of course I have some dressing on the side, which is just olive oil and red wine vinegar. And I made sure that I only did a half a thumb of oil for just dressing because I need the other half for the rest of my food to cook it, you know, for the rest of the day. Otherwise, you're not gonna have any oil, and a lot of people forget that. Then we move on to dinner, which I have a nice piece of grilled chicken. I also have some sweet potatoes, which equates for my carbs, not my vegetables. Then I also have some steamed asparagus to round out my vegetables for the day. Lastly, at night, sometimes I have a little bit of a sweet tooth, I must admit, and that's when I go for the honey bun or some ice cream, but on this, we can't have any of that. No processed sugars, no bad snacking. So we're gonna good snack. I would actually recommend strawberries and bananas. That's like a really good mixture of fruit and that would round out your serving of fruit and it would also finish your carbs for the day. And that's pretty much it. This whole meal is about 1500 calories, which is a deficit for my body that may not be for your body. So to make sure that you get your right amount of calories, you might have to change it up a little bit, but I'd say this is a pretty average meal for this type of diet. Now, the funny thing is, is on this diet, you can actually have some of the foods that you love, like pizza. Yeah, pizza. Because what you would do with the pizza is break it up into your categories. So the bread would be your carbs, the sauce would be, I guess, I don't know, maybe your vegetables. We'll just say vegetables. And then your cheese would be your protein. So you can still kind of do that, but you just can't overdo those things. Just saying. All right, now I gotta try to eat all this. <laughs> Now the last thing I wanted to say is that if you are planning on doing any type of weight loss diet, you also want to make sure that you are including some type of exercise. I know that word scares people, but it's the truth. You should be doing at least two to three 
days worth of exercising, be it some cardio or a workout, anything that's going to help to burn calories and help tone your body. I'm talking like, you know, just go jogging outside or do some jumping jacks or push-ups or crunches. If you need some workout ideas, I have a bunch of videos that I've done right here on this playlist. So go check them out and see if you like any of them. If you do that along with this diet, your results are gonna come much, much faster. Now there can actually be a part two to this video if you want to see me do the diet, even though, I mean, I don't really need to lose weight right now. I'm pretty thin, not sure how much poundage I would lose, but I'd definitely try it if you want to, so let me know. Anyway, that's my whole video, and I hope that you liked it, and if you did, make sure that you like and comment down below and let me know, and also make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you know when my next video goes live, because I don't come out with videos very, very often. They have been very sporadic, so that will help you know. And just to address some people who have had questions of whether I'm quitting YouTube, or why I don't come out with content more often. Things in the world are a little crazy right now, including politics, human rights, and health. You know, we are in a major pandemic. That has had a major effect on my want or desire to make videos lately, and I just haven't been able to get up and actually do them. And I think a lot of people are in this state right now. A lot of YouTubers are feeling the same way. They just feel uninspired. And I think, you know, once we've kind of hit a little bit more of a steady ground, you will see so many more videos from me. But please hold on while we are going through this. And I'm personally going through it myself uh, because I, I'm not leaving you guys anytime soon. I'm, I'm still here. I still want to make videos for you guys. I just needed a little bit of time for myself to just reevaluate things and, and maybe see things in a different light. So hopefully you understand that. <laughs> and if you do, I'll see you next time. <laughs> so bye guys. I'm going to take this a really loud plane. Calorie cap. With that. Now my did I just say that in a, the weirdest way? Probably. Well, let me say that again and hit that. Uh, I said it all different ways. I no, when I sorry, I got the giggles. I don't know what to even say. This is weird.